Hey everyone, this is Dr. Clyde Letsom, and wow, it's been a long time since I've done one of these videos. I hope during the period of time since I last made a video here that you've been uh, remaining safe given what has been going on in the uh, uh, the world over the last about three months or so. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about what we're doing in this video here. Uh, in this video, what I'm presenting is a um, Arduino project for a musical note detector. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and run the introductions. And as soon as we're finished with the introductions, we'll come right back and we'll get into this project. Okay, just in case you find this uh, video on a site where the description is not actually listed, the description for the project, let me go ahead and tell you really quickly what the project is about. So as the, the project is designed, this project will display the approximate frequency as well as musical note that is played, in other words, someone plays, and an electronic keyboard or piano app as long as that frequency of the note played is somewhere between the third and the fifth uh, octave range. Now this may work for some of the instruments, but as long as it, it falls somewhere between that range, the project as designed should be able to display the frequency as well, approximate frequency, as well as the note that was played. Now, if you want additional information about this uh, project, you can go to my website, and that information is uh, listed here, the URL to the project itself. If you don't want to remember the entire URL link here, what you can do is just go ahead and go to my website and type in musical note detector in the search, and it should take you to the project. All right, so let's say you want to build this project. Um, here are the parts that you will need in order to build the exact same one that I built or you'll need similar items if you are uh, skilled enough to uh, figure out how what would be similar. Um, you'll need an Arduino Uno. You will need a DevMo high sensitivity sound detection module for Arduino. You'll need a breadboard, computer, USB cable, uh, connection wires, Arduino IDE. You're gonna need some sort of a keyboard or keyboard app or piano app. Uh, also, if you are not using a keyboard, you may need some PC speakers uh, in order to um, play the signal into the microphone. And though that PC speaker or those PC speakers should actually have an amplifier in them. Again, if you have an actual keyboard or piano, the sound coming from those may be sufficient uh, enough for the uh, the detection module to actually pick up the sound from those. All right, so unlike some of the previous uh, weekend projects that I've done, I'm actually not gonna show you this circuit being built. Uh, the reason is, is because I built this exact same circuit in the last weekend project that I did. And if you wanna get a look at that weekend project, uh, in the upper right hand corner here of this um, video, you should be able to see a pop up there that will lead you to that. If you want to see me building that circuit, it will lead you to a video of me building that circuit anyway. And that was for a frequency detector. But um, what you do have here, though, is at least a diagram that kind of shows you um, how you can put the connections together. And as you can see here, the microphone sensor is actually shown in red. My Arduino Uno is shown up here and the connections are being made on the breadboard. So let's go ahead and talk really quickly about the sketch or more what I like to call the code uh, that we're gonna download into the Arduino in order to do the uh, note 
or frequency detection and then note display. Uh, so we have our constants that I have set up up here, the number of samples that are going to be taken, the uh, sampling frequency, and based off of Nyquist, this needs to be twice as high as the highest frequency expected. So we can't input based off of where we currently are, we cannot input any frequency that's going to be higher than 1024. Okay, then we have the offset samples, and we have a little bit of a tuner here. I found that I needed this in order to, let's say, go from one app to another app um, to make minor adjustments, okay, as two apps are not the same in terms of the actual frequency that they produce. Uh, all right, so in this area here, we now have our different variables. We have in our, our array, and in here we have the stored note frequencies for... Uh, the third octave, so 130.81 uh, hertz, 138.59 uh, hertz, so on and so forth. And this starts from uh, C3 here. Uh, we have the remainder of our different variables here that we're going to be using throughout the entire program. Again, not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. If you want more information about this, you can actually go to my site and I'll give a little bit more description as to what's going on in the uh, sketch or code here. Uh, then we have a section here we do where we do some calibrating. And this section is used to find, let's say, when the notes or no notes are being played, what is the voltage or not the voltage, but what is the... Um, the uh, quantized number that's going to be used to represent that zero and so i want it to be set personally i want it to be set for approximately 5 512 which is uh half of the 1024 in terms of the different levels that we have um then from there uh we go into an area here where we're just kind of setting it up uh letting the person know that we're counting down they're going to be able to uh, hit the note that they're going to play after we count down. You can see play your note. All right, then we get into this section here where we actually collect the data and the data is, data is coming in on uh, pin A0 from the Arduino. So in other words, our module is connected, the analog is connected to, analog output is connected to A0 of the Arduino. Uh, then we come down here, we do an autocorrelation. This is an autocorrelation function that actually goes through and finds the actual uh, frequency. And we actually do this three, uh, we do, um, we try to find three different cycles and that kind of helps us in terms of uh, finding a more, you know, uh, getting our frequency right. If we only did it based off of one cycle, then you know, we'd have some issues or we may have some issues if that one is incorrect. So we actually collect three different um, three different cycles here in order to determine uh, what the frequency is. And again, we do that using the autocorrelation function. Again, you can get more information on my site about that. Uh, once we've done that, then we start to do the analysis. We created a weighting function here. And what the weighting function does is the weighting function actually puts more weight to having more cycles uh, in our analysis information and less weight having less cycles. And again, can be explained, will be explained uh, more on my website. Uh, here, in case the program has an issue trying to understand what's showing up, I gave it a little bit of a personality here. Okay, and as you can see that. Uh, then we come down here, and I'm kind of speeding through this. And again, this is all being where the analysis is being done. And so we come down here, we've determined what our frequency is in this range here. We find what the, uh, the frequency is, pardon me, in this range. Or oh, pardon me, in this area here, we find the frequency. Once we find the fre found the frequency, we go ahead and we adjust the octaves uh, to match that area, that frequency that we found. Once we found that, then we try to find the closest note to that frequency. And then down here, what this does is it prints out the frequency or the note. All right, so I have my uh, sketch or code already uh, loaded up here. Uh, and I was pre-testing this. I'm gonna go ahead and reset. And let's try it out. 
beat to one. Okay, timing is important here, so let's try this again. All right, and this is actually C3 that I played down here. And so if I go up here, this would be C4. So let's try this. And you can see that it says C4 here. Let's try another note. I'm going to hit this here. And that should be C sharp, as you can see on the screen. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slide up. All right, and this now should be C5. Try this. And again, timing is important. Three, two, one. Okay, and you can see that it shows that it's C5. All right, so you can see that the program actually worked. And so we've had success with this. Uh, this app, again, I'll put the information as to what the name of the app is. I think it was called the Mini Piano Light or something like that. I'll go ahead and put that on my website also. But as you can see, the app actually, or pardon me, the sketch actually works, the project actually works. Uh, if you ever looking for any sort of services within the area of signal processing, audio processing, uh, again, this is the sort of stuff that I do and you can see that from this demonstration. All right, uh, please do, if you like this project, go ahead and like, share it, uh, subscribe to my channel also. And I'll see you for future upcoming projects.